Microsoft Excel might be one of the most commonly used apps in all of business, but it's also probably one of the most confusing and hard to understand apps. And a lot of people really want to use it on their iPad, but it looks so different from the computer versions that they often give up very quickly. I have a lot of people on my channel asking about Microsoft Excel specifically on the iPad and how to use it, so I decided to make a nice little tutorial to help you get started with this wonderful application. Because if you can master Microsoft Excel on the iPad, now you have access to all your spreadsheets and your business needs right on your tablet, on the go, anywhere you want it. So having the ability to work on your spreadsheets on your iPad is just a really good benefit. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and if you've seen my content before, you know I use my M4 iPad Pro as my only computer, and I use it for my business needs as well as my personal needs. So I'm a project manager during the day, so I make lots and lots of spreadsheets for all kinds of purposes. I use Microsoft Excel to make budgets, I use it to make project schedules, and I also use it in my teaching job to track, say, test scores. There's so many uses for Excel, and everybody uses this app all the time, and so I want to give you a nice clean guide on how to get started in using Excel. I want to talk about the toolbars, which is the biggest complaint probably that everyone has because they're so different from the computer versions, so a lot of folks have trouble finding what they want and getting access to the tools they need to make things happen in Excel. So we'll talk toolbars, we'll also talk about formulas a little bit, and I'll show you a few examples of how to get started with formulas. And finally, we'll talk about pivot tables, which are really nice and can really help you avoid formulas altogether sometimes. Now, some things you should note here before we get started. So I am using the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch model. And so your experience with Excel can vary based on the iPad that you're using. For example, the toolbars show up differently based on the iPad screen size that you have. So if you have a smaller iPad than this, you might have to scroll left or right to see all the tools that I'm talking about. Now, I'm also going to be demonstrating Microsoft Excel using Apple's Magic Keyboard. And so I really recommend that if you're going to have a good experience with Microsoft Excel on your iPad, you really should use a keyboard and trackpad. You don't have to, and if you're on the go, the touch controls work okay, but I really like to get things done with a keyboard and trackpad. It just makes things a lot faster, and it gives you that computer-like experience. If you really want to kick it up a notch and you're not on the go, you can always connect your iPad to a secondary display if you you have a model that supports that. So I love my M4 iPad Pro because I can connect it to a secondary display so I can get lots of spreadsheets open at once. All right, enough said, let's get into the guide. Okay, so for my first example, I've got a spreadsheet here and let's say I'm trying to track student test scores. And so I wanna track the student, I wanna track their score, and I wanna track whether they passed or failed the exam. So I can just set up my data in my cells and the first controls I'll talk about in the toolbar are the bold and under underline and italicize buttons. Those are pretty straightforward to everybody and I like to bold my titles of my columns. Now the next button I'll talk about in order here is the border button and so that is to change up the borders around your cells and so you can select the cells that you want to change the borders for and then select what you want from the border options. You can also scroll to the bottom and see where you can change colors of the border and thickness and that sort of thing. These controls are okay but I'm going to talk to you about how to format your data as a table here in a little bit and a lot of times that's just easier to use than trying to manually control your cell borders but you've got the button there to do it if you want. Now next let's talk about the alignment button. So the alignment button is where you can center text or right justify it or left justify it and even center it in a cell appropriately. So if I've got some text here I've got my column headers and I want to change those so that they are centered I can just highlight those cells and click center and there we go they're in position. Very important to make your table look clean. You also have the ability to wrap text. So if you have a lot of text in one cell, this is really great for wrapping your text around so it doesn't fall into another cell or just keep on going to the right forever and ever. So there's where wrap text is. Okay, next is a really important one in the toolbar and it's the number format button. So let's say I want to format the scores of my students so that they are in percentage form. Well, you can do that by highlighting the cells that you want or the whole column. And then where it says general, that's where you have the options to select the different format. So I'm going to select percentage. Now when I do that, it might change your numbers a little wonky because I entered my numbers as whole numbers. And so I might have to go through and change those numbers back. If you wanted them to be in the proper format as a percentage, I should have written them in as a decimal. But anywho, that's how you change the formatting. You can get access to currency formatting there or whatever other kind of format that you need. Okay, next, let's talk about conditional formatting. And I love this feature of Excel. And so what you can do is you can make cells change color 
based on what's happening in that cell. So for example, let's say I wanted to capture all the students that passed the exam and the cutoff score is 65%, let's say. So I can use the conditional formatting button to set up some conditions so I can put in it has to be 65% or greater to pass. You can select greater than or equal to, so that's really nice. And you can select a color. So everybody that passed, I want it to turn green. So I'll choose green, set the formatting, boom. Everyone that's 65% or greater is in green and I can just easily see who passed. You can set up more conditional formats. So if I want a condition where it's red if the student failed, I can put that in. So anybody that's less than 65%, their score turns red, boom. It's really awesome and really handy. So play around with conditional formatting, set up some colors that are useful for your spreadsheet. Okay, the next button, I'm gonna call this the format table button. So it's really nice to format your data as a table because when you do that, Excel kind of looks at your data differently and you can start to manage that data more quickly. So if you click this button that says more and then you can select format table or sometimes it will automatically just do it for you if you have a cell selected with some data around it. And you'll have this new table button that gives you some new controls and changes up the toolbar. So now you can change the styles of your table. You can change the colors, the header row. You can say whether you want to have a header row or not. You can choose if you want to have banded rows, which kind of gives you the alternating colors so you can see data more easily. That's actually really nice. But now you have full control over your table and the colors and the data and how you want it to look. So that's why I don't do too much manual formatting because once I convert it to a table, it's just a lot easier to manage the colors and the borders and things like that. Now, in addition, when you change it to a table, you have access to these arrows in the column headers. And that's really nice because now you can start to sort the data and it will sort all the columns instead of just one. So let's give you an example of another kind of spreadsheet. So let's say I have a small business and I'm tracking my clients and who I've invoiced and what the invoice amounts are for. So you can set this data up as a table and you can format the table the way you want. And now that you can sort, I can sort by the invoice amount so I can see who paid me the most and who paid me the least. Or I can sort by customer name or however I want and it sorts the whole table. So take advantage of turning your data into a table and then sorting as you wish. All right, so now let's talk about formulas a little bit. So there are so many formulas to use in Excel. And if you hit the formula tab at the top, you can see all the different ones and they have them categorized by logical or financial or recents. And if you wanna know a little bit about a formula, you can hover over it and there's a little I and it will give you a description of that formula. So I'm gonna cover a couple formulas here. Let's talk about auto sum first. So auto sum is great. Let's go back to that invoice sheet. If I wanna know the total amount of money that I'm gonna make from all the invoices, I can just select a cell, select the auto sum formula. And you have a few choices here. You can do some average and a few others. But if I select some, that means add them all up. If I click that, boom, it gives me a total of my invoices. So nice, so handy. Now, another example of a more complicated formula is the if formula. I love this one. So let's go back to that spreadsheet where I was looking at my student scores. And let's say I want to determine who passed or failed. Well, I can select a cell and select the if formula. And then I have to define some things. So the logical test is I have to select the cell of the data that I want to test against. So that would be the test score. So just for this example, I'm going to say if the test score is greater than 64%, that's passing. And so to set the formula up, you just type in greater than 64%. And then for the true false indicators, the true indicator is pass. And you have to put that in quotation. So you write quotation, pass, quotation, and then there has to be a comma for the next value, and it automatically puts it in there for you. Excel's getting good at just automatically putting things in. So the next indicator is fail. So parentheses, fail, parentheses, enter. And now that I have that, boom, it just automatically calculates. Okay, this test score was this, that's a fail. And then you can actually pull the formula down so it fills all the rest of the cells, and it will immediately tell you if somebody passed or failed. It's really nice. Okay, let's talk about pivot tables. Those are extremely important and it can help you avoid formulas because pivot tables just sort of figure things out for you without you having to know how to type in formulas. So let's go back to that client sheet. And let's say 
I wanted to see who made me the most money. Well, all you have to do to make a pivot table is to select any cell inside your table. I'm gonna show you a little trick here because if you can't find something in the toolbar, you can always go to the far right corner in Excel and select the three dots and there's a little light bulb that says tell me and you can punch just about anything that you can think of in there. So if you can't remember where wrap text is, just type in wrap text and you'll see it. But for this case, I'm gonna type in pivot table. I don't wanna find it in the toolbar, I just want it to pull right up in this box. So I'll type in pivot table and there it is. And now you get an option to put it in another sheet if you want and then you can work with the column headers that you have on the right side. So I can select client and then I can select invoice amount and then Excel will automatically put this together in a table for me so I can see which client made me the most money. And it will also total up all the invoices for me. It's really nice. So another example of using pivot tables, if I go back to that student sheet example, maybe I want to see which students passed and which students failed. So you can again select a cell within your table, go to that light bulb, type in pivot table, and now you can give it the columns and it will automatically collect the students that passed and the students that failed. It even puts it in a little nested format so you can nest and unnest to see what you want to see when you want to see it. So play around with pivot tables. They're really helpful for crunching the data together for you so you don't have to figure out formulas all the time and just give you the data in different ways. All right, so that's just some of the ways to get you started in Microsoft Excel on your iPad. I hope this helps. There's so much more to talk about with Excel and so I'll probably continue to make more content about it. Check back in for that. Let me know if you have specific questions about Microsoft Excel on the iPad. I'll see if I can help you out. You can leave a comment below. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.